inner development, transformation of human consciousness and layers. Master uses every single opportunity that may be available to enter the seeker, to establish a communion. That is the only way that he will be able to make a breakthrough, not break down. Sometimes he says words, sometimes he creates a gesture. Gurdjieff was very versatile in creating gestures. He is talking to someone in a very pleasant mood. All of a sudden door opens and someone flutters in. All of a sudden the person who is entering in and Gurdjieff catch sight of one another. He will make ugly gestures and with that maybe a gesture of jeering, maybe a gesture of mocking or something. With that, he used to test the authenticity of the person who is trying to flutter in. But it makes no difference to him. This is one of the techniques that one can use. And it is because of that, one of my saying it, it is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues. I need to have everyday time for my sojourn. When I am all alone, I can spend time in my own company. But there are people sitting, flocking around, it becomes difficult, but if you are not bothered about what people think about you, you can use any device to come out of that situation. I had spoken on the first layer, the corrupted sense organs. Now the second layer around the being is from outside. We are we have to remove the layers, peel off the onion from outside. So the from outside when you look at the most outermost layer is that of corrupt senses and the most the layer just before the innermost layer is that of very thin layer is that of Baka. Between these there are several layers. The second layer when you are peeling off the onion is conditioning. Conditioning can be social, political, religious, ideological and when you talk about ideologies this is this creates a belief system. Belief system makes you completely non-communicative. If you are a Hindu and the other person is a Mohammedan, immediately there is no communication possible. If you are a man and I am a man, there is possibility of communication. But if you are a communist and the other is a fascist, then communication stops. All belief systems are dis destructive to, to the process of communication and the whole life is nothing but communicating. Communicating with trees, communicating with rivers, communicating with sun and moon, communicating with people and animals. It is communication and life is communication. If you are a Muslim and you are communicating with the moon or trees or river, you are immediately considered there is something wrong. 
the Hindus in the process of worshipping the sun, the moon, the river, the trees, they communicate. Dialogue disappears when you are burdened with belief system. How can you really be in a dialogue? You are already too full of your ideas and you think they are absolutely true. When you are listening to others, you are just being polite, otherwise you don't listen. You know what is right. You are simply waiting until this man finishes and then you jump upon him. Yes, there can be a debate and a discussion and argumentation, but there can be no dialogue between the people of two ideologies. Between two beliefs, there is no possibility of dialogue. Beliefs destroy friendship, they destroy humanity, they destroy the communion. So if you want to see and hear and listen, then you have to drop all belief systems. This is one way that I may start the talk with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and somewhere I may say Buddham Sharanam Gachami and the Maham Brahmasmi. This becomes confusion to the people. Is he really a Muslim and as a Muslim you are supposed to follow the basic commandments. As a Christian you are supposed to follow the basic commandments. I follow no commandment from anyone. All that is springs forth deep from deep within. That is my scripture. That is the way I live. People are moving like windowless houses. Yes, you come close. Sometimes you clash with each other, but you never meet. Yes, sometimes you touch, but you never meet. You talk, but you never communicate. Even if you try to communicate, but there is no communion. Everybody is imprisoned in his own conditioning. Everybody is carrying his own prison around him, prison of belief system. This has to be dropped. Belief creates a kind of a smugness and belief system stops any kind of exploration because one becomes afraid, doesn't know what may happen. Maybe you come across something in the process of exploration that is against your belief system, then what happens? It will disturb your whole system. So it is better not to explore. Remain confined to a dull, dead and defined world. Never go beyond it. And remember the truth is beyond the dimensions of the new. But this belief system remain within the con remain confined within the known world gives you a kind of comfort. It gives you an as if kind of knowledge, as if one knows. You don't know anything. You don't know anything about God, but you have a certain belief about God. You do not know anything about truth, but you have a theory and a hypothesis about truth. This as if is very dangerous. It is a kind of hypnotized state of mind. Males and females all have been conditioned, although in different ways. Man is conditioned to be aggressive, to be competitive, to be manipulative, to be egoistic. Man has been prepared for different kind of work, to be the exploiter, to be the oppressor, to be the master. Women have given a belief system to be slaves. 
they have been taught how to submit they have been given a very very small world the world of the household my family my husband my children my house that's all women is confined has been confined up to now but now women is coming out of their confinement and they are exploring in other worlds and that is creating a problem of many dimensions the whole life has been taken away from them but once the belief system settles in the woman accepts it and remains confined to it the man accepts his belief system and remains confined to his system men have been taught not to cry tears are not manly so men do not cry now what kind of foolishness is this tears glands are directly related to something that it clears of the emotion emotional decongestion if there is a congestion in this chest area that is because of emotion state of emotional disturbance the chest area gets congested asthma is a kind of a disease which is partially related to emotional disturbance in an individual so when you cry that nasal decongestion nasal congestion clears but it is considered unmanly for a man to cry crying and weeping sometimes has such a therapeutic effect it is needed it is a must it unburdens man goes on burden burdening himself because he cannot cry and cannot weep it is unmanly and women are taught to cry and weep it is perfectly womanly they go on crying and weeping even where it is not needed it is just a belief system they use crying as a strategy to manipulate woman knows that true argument she will not be able to win over her husband but when she cries that works so that becomes her argument man is corrupted in one way he cannot cry woman is corrupted in another way she starts crying and uses crying as a strategy to dominate crying becomes political and when your tears are political they lose they lose all beauty and they become absolutely ugly this second conditioning is one of the most difficult thing to get rid of it is very complex you have a certain political ideology a certain religious ideology and seven and several other kinds of ideologies they are all jumbled up in your mind they have become so much part of you that you do not think they are separate from you when you say i am a hindu you do not say that i have a belief called hinduism no you say i am a hindu you are identified with hinduism if hinduism is in danger you think you are in danger if someone burns your burns a temple you think you are in danger or if someone burns quran you think you are in danger because you are a muslim and that has given birth to jihads of many kinds these belief systems have to be dropped then understanding arises then there is a readiness to explore the innocence arises then you are surrounded by a sense of mastery oh wonder 
then life is no longer a known thing. It is an adventure. It is so mysterious that you can go on exploring. There is no need, no end to this process of exploring. And you never create any belief. You remain in a state of not knowing like a child. This is what childlike innocence is. On that state Sufi master insist much and so do the Zen masters. In fact all great masters of the world insist on this state of innocence when all belief systems are dropped. If they agree on one thing it is the state of not knowing, the state of utter innocence. Remain constantly in the state of not knowing. If you happen to know something, do not make a belief system out of it. Go on dropping it, go on throwing it. Do not let it surround you, otherwise sooner or later it will become a hard crust and you will not be able to live. You will not be available to life. Remain always childlike. Then communication becomes possible. Dialogue becomes a possibility. When two people who are in a state of no, not knowing talk, there is a meeting. They commune. There is nothing to hinder. You will be able to understand me only if you are in a state of not knowing. Because I am in, in that state continuously. And that is the reason my talks do not exhibit any belief system. With me, communication is possible only if you drop your belief system, otherwise they will hinder the path and thus the process of transformation of human consciousness. The third layer, the third layer is called pseudo-reasoning, a kind of a rationaliz rationalization, explanations, and excuses, they are all borrowed. Not a single one is your own authentic experience, but they give a kind of satisfaction. You think you are very rational being. You cannot become rational by accumulating borrowed arguments and proofs. The real reason arises only when you are intelligent. Intelligence is the quality of being available to the spur of the moment and trying to resolve that. And remember, there is a difference between an intellectual and a man whom I call intelligence. Maybe. The intellectual is hidden behind the pseudo-reasoning. His reasoning may be very logical, but it cannot be logical and helpful. His reasoning is pseudo and it appears like a reasoning, but it is not a reasoning. I have heard a man was drowning. He entered a swimming pool without knowing swimming and he started shouting, help, I am drowning, I cannot swim, I cannot swim, he continued to cry. There was no one around, somewhere nearby an old man was sitting, enjoying his bear enjoying his beer with a few snacks. He addressed this old man saying, help me, I cannot swim. I cannot either. 
said the old man sitting on the river bank who was enjoying his beer and snacks. I cannot either, said the man sitting on the bank of the river, but I am not shouting like you. You cannot swim, but you are shouting. I cannot swim. I am very comfortable sitting on the river bank, enjoying my beer and snacks, and I am not shouting. This is a kind of pseudo-reasoning. The first man is shouting because he is in a danger of drowning. The other man is not in a danger of drowning or anything because he is out of the water. But there is a reasoning. You are shouting because you do not know swimming. I am not shouting or creating any noise that I am not I do not know swimming. This is pseudo reasoning. Now this is perfectly rational. Why are you shouting about it? You cannot swim, neither can I. So keep quiet. There is no need to shout. Or let the whole world know that I cannot swim. But you are sitting on the bank and he is in the river. The situation is different. The context is different, but the pseudo-reasoning does not understand this. When Buddha says something, you can repeat the same thing, but the context is different. When Muhammad says something, you can repeat exactly the same thing, but it, is, but it will not mean the same thing because context is different. It is the context that matters and not what you say. It is not what you say, but who are that matters. It all depends on context. Who you are, where you are, it depends from what point of view, from what experience you utter something. I use the same words that you use, but they do not mean the same. The two men are using the same language, but the context is different. One is in the river, the other is outside. The context is different. When I utter them, I utter them when you utter you utter them. The words are the same because they come from different spaces. They carry a different meaning, a different connotation, different flavor, different music. It is important what inner space you are in from where the words are emanating. Pseudo reasoning is just apparent reasoning. It is not knowing. It is more for the sake of finding excuses. It is more for the sake of argumentation. In this kind of deceiving, the male mind is very expert. This is the male mind's expertise or creation. He has learned the art very deeply. This filter is very strong in the male mind. Real reasoning arises only when pseudo-reasoning has been dropped. What is the real reason? But the, beware of the pseudo-reasoning. Pseudo always creates a filter and real always creates a door. You cannot enter through the filter but you can enter in and exit from the door. The real always creates a bridge and pseudo creates a block. This third pseudo reasoning layer is one of the greatest disturbances in the process of transformation. The fourth layer is that of emotional, emotion or sentiments. It is 
not a reasoning but it is pseudo feeling much ado about nothing much fuss female mind is very expert in this just as we had pseudo reasoning we have a pseudo feeling it is kind of empty just on the surface it is an impotent sympathy it does not do anything if somebody is ill you sit by their side and you cry your crying is not going to help the house is in fire the house is on fire and you cry this is not going to help either this pseudo kind of feeling has to be detected first and when you detect only then you can remove it otherwise you will never know what real feeling is the real feeling is involvement kind of commitment it is empathy not only sympathy it is an action whenever you really feel something in your heart it immediately transforms you and becomes an action that is the criteria if the feeling becomes an action only then it is a real feeling if it is not then it is pseudo that is the only criteria your feeling becoming your actions if your feeling just remains a feeling and never becomes an action then know well that it is pseudo then you are deceiving yourself or somebody else many times people come and say we feel much love for you we understand what you say but that but destroys all they have said before they say we feel the wife says i love you but only if we feel that what you are saying is right that you are doing the right thing but we cannot become cannot follow your way if you feel that what i am saying is right if you feel that what i am saying is truth if you feel what i am saying is sensible and can help you to come out of your state of misery then how can you avoid not following that then your feeling would become an action then your feeling would become a commitment otherwise what is the point one can never go against one's heart if you are still going against your heart then you must have a pseudo heart a pretender just as the third is the feel for male expertise the fourth is the feel for female expertise then there comes the fifth layer fifth layer is corrupted poisoned instincts repressions and disfiguration gurjeev used to say all your centers are overlapping each other they are misplaced they are interf interfering with one another and trespassing you know you understand this word trespassing we have learned the art of trespassing the territories of the others you do not know what is what each center in its own functioning is beautiful but when it is starts interfering into somebody else function then there is a great difficulty then the whole system goes neurotic in your house there is a place for every center as if i may use that word the kitchen center where food is cooked 
the dining center where you consume your food, the entertainment center where there is a living room couch, you sit down, there is a washroom area, but if you want to use your living room or the bedroom as the washroom area and washroom as the kitchen area that is trespassing in somebody else territory and that will create a chaos. The food must be cooked in the kitchen center but sometimes we have developed of the habit of sitting down on the couch and eating our meals. Things fall on the couch, between the couch, between the seats and creates all kind of chaos. And when you remove the cushion covers, you will find a lot of food stuff remaining there. We are eating food sitting down on the couch. We have a television controlled in our hand. The hands are full of food and grease and you go on using the remote control to change the channels. If after some time, maybe for one year, you use your remote control like that, you go and open it and check. There is drops of oil specks of the food inside the remote control when you open. The same thing happens, people are eating food, they just wipe the hands with the napkin and use the laptop mouse. This is trespassing the other territory. For example, each, if your sex center functions as sex center, it is perfectly good. But people have been repressing it so much that in many people, sex center does not exist in their genitals. Instead, it has moved to their heads. That is why, that is what overlapping is. Now they make love through their heads. Hence there is a great importance to pornography. Pornography means it is the outcome of corrupted senses. The, none of the center is operating in its own territory. Sex center should remain confined to genitals. When it comes to the mind, it gives birth to pornography, the visualization. Even while making love to your woman or man, you may be thinking of some other beautiful actor or actress that you are making love to that person. Then suddenly you become interested in making love to your own spouse. In fact, your own Man or woman is non-existential. It is a kind of masturbation. You are not making love to your spouse. Instead, you are making love to someone else who is not there. And you are, you go on getting fascination in your head. Sex can be transformed when it is confined to its own center. It cannot be transformed if it has reached to your head. It has created a pseudo-center in your head. This creates a problem. Gurdjieff was a Sufi whose whole teaching comes from Sufi masters. He introduced methods into the Western world how to demark each center and how to allow the center to function in its own field. The head should function as far as reasoning is concerned, that's all. 
have you watched sometimes people come and they say i think i love you i think i love you what kind of a statement is this love has nothing to do with thinking how can you think that you love me but they do not know how to function from the heart directly even the heart has to go via head as if you are traveling through an airline that takes you to your destination via a roundabout route they cannot simply say i love you watch and observe let head function as reason let heart function as feeling let sex function as sex let everything function in its own way do not allow mechanisms to mix them into each other otherwise you will have corrupted instincts when an instinct is natural untabooed spontaneous without any inhibition there is a clarity in your body a harmony in your body there is a humming sound in your organisms so the first layer is corrupted sense the second layer the third fourth then the fifth layer is also a male expertise and the sixth layer is corrupted intuition